welcome to a special new versus old episode of Brutal Battle. You may be saying to yourself, what is new versus old? I mean, well, probably not that specifically, because everyone knows what new versus old means, but what does that have to do with this podcast? So I started just thinking it might be interesting to just kind of do a look back on a few styles, in this instance, just two styles at the moment that are currently the most popular styles of beer in the uh, craft beer industry, and look at where they were when we started our podcast and where they are now popularity-wise. So we're going to do IPA and we're going to do sour. You know, obviously you can do like subcategories of those, but we're just going to do kind of more generic. So like what was the popular thing IPA-wise back when we started the podcast and what's popular now versus what was popular uh, also with sours back when we started the podcast and what's popular with sours now. So kind of take a look and, you know, just see what do we like better on this podcast? You know, do we pine for the days of old still or are we really cool with what's happening right now? And because we wanted to be relatively fair, we did good examples. We didn't go and get like, you know, random examples that we don't know if they're good or if they're bad. We went with good, respectable breweries just to make sure that we get good examples of new and of old to make it as fair as possible. So if this goes well, if we like it, if you guys like it, and you can let us know, BrutalBattlePodcast at gmail.com, we can do more of these. We can try because we also consider doing stouts. Right. Uh, we could also do maybe some loggers of, of a type, maybe even a pilsner or something. We could do saisons. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff we could get into. So it would be more limited, but we could could do more yeah, of these. It, would be, it was a little challenging to come up with these, though, to kind of figure out, like, what was an old IPA that would represent the older style of IPA. Right. And, and something that we could find on the shelf. Yeah, and it's, yeah, not old IPAs that we found in right. our cellar. <laughs> right. And even when we were out, we were looking at date codes and it was hard to find yeah, yeah, things that, in date codes. Well, I mean, in general, nowadays there's so much hoppy stuff on the market that it's hard to find it, within good date code hoppy stuff. It yeah. really is. And it always ticks me off. I know I've said this before on the podcast, but it's been a while. It really ticks me off when breweries have a best buy date because you don't get to decide that for the consumer. The consumer should be able to decide when it's best buy for them. You should say bottled on or canned on date and then they can make that decision because I know there are people who are fine to drink an IPA six months out or there's people like us who we want to drink it like three months out max for the most part. So when you put the canned on or bottled on versus Best Buy, you're allowing people to kind of tailor their taste more, and I feel like that's better. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let's start okay. with our very first one, and this is one that, I mean, it's still popular. Mm -hmm. It's still selling quite well. It hasn't gone away. It's, cl it's a classic. It's definitely a classic. This is by Dogfish Head, and it's their 60-minute IPA. Now, it, it bears saying that this is the very first IPA that pioneered continuous hopping as a method for making hoppy beers. Now, if you've ever been to Dogfish Head and do their tour or you've visited their website, you can see information that <laughs> originally when Sam Calagione uh, started the, the continuous hopping method, he was doing it very uh, DIY, yeah. very low budget. He basically took one of those old vibrating electric, electronic football games and he he just kind of like had it tilted a bit over a bucket that had holes drilled at the bottom over the boil kettle. And he, well, it was probably just a pot at that point because he was just doing home brewing. And he would put the hops on and just have it like, it would slowly shake the hops down into the bucket and then have them come out the holes as more were added to the bucket. So it would continuously be putting more hops in there. Well, things are a lot different now at Dogfish Head because when we were there last, they have a basically like a hop cannon. It's like an air cannon in a sense that just like shoots handfuls of hops at certain inter intervals into the boil kettle. Uh, and you can hear it too. It's this crazy like noise every now and then. And you're just like, what is that? 
it's like a, a quick release of air. And that's what it is. They're blowing hops mm. up into the boil kettle. So still doing continuous hopping. And, you know, this is where that started. So this is Dogfish Head 60-Minute IPA still being put in bottles. It is 12 ounces and it is 6% alcohol. Um, this will be interesting because when was the last time we've had this I don't beer? Know. I don't We were talking about this when we bought it. Like, I don't remember. I do remember that I feel like... If you go into, like, any bar and they don't have, like, a huge craft beer list, this is generally on it. So it's always yeah, a safe bet. I agree. Yeah, this it, – and it's crazy to consider where it was versus where it is now. Because when they got started out, obviously, it wasn't everywhere. And all these years later, like, this is kind of a staple mm-hmm. as far yeah. as hoppy beers go. Uh, also, I am going to – can you hand me my phone? Because I will check when we've had it last. Uh, but go ahead. We can, okay. we can start talking about it. It's pretty clear. Um, yellowish, yellowish, orangish. Totally agree with that. What's it smelling like? Um, definitely, I'm getting some pine. Dehydrated orange. All right. It smells juicy. A little pineapple. Juicy. That's good. So the last time we had 60 Minute IPA was about three and a half years ago. Okay. So it has been a considerable amount of time since we've had this beer. Well, oh, you said you got... <sighs> I'm just trying to see if I get anything different. I think you hit it pretty well. <clears throat> okay. it's, it's got a decent amount of pine to it. It's a little sweet smelling, mm-hmm. but not crazy. It's got a nice bitterness to it. And I get some oranginess as well that's kind of balancing out that pine. It smells good. It smells refreshing. It smells nice and hoppy, flavorful. I think it it's a, tastes how it smells. Yeah. Um, easy easy Ooh. drinking. Definitely. What was the ABV on this? Six. Six. Sessionable. This is, I mean. I think it holds up. It's still a good beer. I see why this has kind of become a hoppy staple at a lot of places. Uh, yeah, you get that pininess, but almost on the same level, you're getting that orangey flavor as well. Mm-hmm. There's a decent bitterness. So people who are used to drinking hazy IPAs, if you go to something like this, you're going to be like, oh man, that bitterness, that's yeah. crazy. But it's not It's not super bitter, to be honest. It, re- it really is not, especially for back when this beer was pioneered. I wonder um, how old tasty. it is. The recipe? Yeah, like when did they first start brewing 60 Minute? You can probably Google it. I don't it have real my phone. Quick. Here, you want to use mine real quick? Um, but I will say that, like, when I take a sip of this, each time I take a sip of this, I feel like I get a bit of like a zing of that orange at the very end that's kind of tasting more like an orange peel and getting a little bit like a slight grapefruit as well that just kind of starts to peek through. Do you experience that one? I wasn't listening. That's okay. A little bit of grapefruit coming through, I was oh. saying. I'm not perceiving that, but I could... You could... I could see why right. you think that. Okay. It's good. This is a nice... This is a nice, hoppy, old-school beer. I mean... I would drink this more now. The only problem is we don't end up repeating a whole lot of beers just because mainly we're doing this podcast, so we're trying to try as many as possible. Plus... There are so many breweries, and all these breweries are putting out new stuff all the time. You just constantly feel like you just want to try stuff, try stuff, try stuff. 60-Minute IPA comes from the era of flagship beers, which flagship beers aren't really a thing anymore. And we were just talking about that. Well, some breweries have tried to bring flagship back. and Well, and there are certain ones. They don't call them flagship necessarily, but they kind of have flagship beers. Um, but, yeah, I mean... Close to us, well, not close, but in Maryland, True Respite. You know, they started a side brand called Bright Spot Brewing. And their whole idea with that was to have kind of like these steady beers coming out. So they started with, what is it, a lager and an IPA. IPA. And they're just going to keep making those recipes. So, I mean, those are flagships, basically. Okay, so on their website, it says it's a year-round release. It is original release date. You want to guess? Oh, man. It's... 
I gotta think, 2008? 2003. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this beer is 13 years old. The, the recipe is 13 years old, basically. Wow. And it's still, it's still tasting good. It's still holding yeah. up. So where have we gone? That's where we started when this podcast started. Where Where is it now? We all know this. It's I hazies. mean, I feel like when this podcast started, I remember, it, I think I gave you and Kyle a 60-minute blind and you dogged on it. That's possible. <laughs> that is possible. But, you know, also our pal- palettes were just starting out. You just had kitty palettes. Yeah, young palettes. You know, you... You're, and the other thing is your tastes change yeah. over time, too. So where are we now? Obviously, we're with Hazy IPAs. We complain about it all the time on the podcast. But to be honest, there are breweries who are doing Hazy IPAs very well. If we consider who made Hazy IPAs popular, obviously, it's the Alchemist with their heady topper. People then wanted to scramble to try and get that type of beer. The sad thing is I feel like it's become a bastardized style because a lot of breweries have just started putting their own spin on it in a bad way of just being like, well, let's just make it look as hazy as possible and not focus on the actual flavor. And that's how you lead to things like throwing flour into the beer just to make it look more hazy, and that tastes disgusting. Uh, But there are breweries who are trying to stick true to having a good beer that is a hazy IPA, and one of those breweries... We've talked about them a good amount lately, well, over the past year or so. Uh, Sapwood Cellars out of Columbia, uh, Maryland. And for that reason, we chose one of their cans, 16-ounce cans for this, because we also happen to have it on hand. Uh, So this is their uh, IPA, double dry hopped with Vic Secret, Hydra, and Galaxy. And this beer is Cheater Hops 18 and it's 6.8% alcohol. Okay. So not that far so, off yeah, alcohol-wise. Yeah. Too bad we couldn't have a heady topper on here. That would have been a really good representation. Yeah, that's hard to get. I know. But, yeah. Okay. In a perfect world, that's what we would have had. Yeah. So once again, we made sure to pick an actual like good example of a hazy. Oh, the heady topper would be old. What do you do mean? Do you consider it a new style or an old style? Because uh, it's an older style of a new trend. That's true. I mean, within the hazy IPA category, it would be considered old. I mean, yeah. it would be considered like the grandfather. It'd be considered basically like, you know, Sierra Nevada's pale ale as far as pale ales go. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. It's weird to it's weird to think that. Yeah. And it, it it's but it's good weird... that you brought that up. Okay. So it, it's hazy. <laughs> what does it look like? It's hazy and yellow. What does it look like, though? That juice bra. Thank you. I need that. Yeah, it's very yellow. It's a little bit of an orange tinge to it, but it's very it's yellow. yellow. There's a decent head hanging out on top. Uh, we poured Agitated for this and the 60 Minute, and this is way more of a head yeah. than the 60 Minute had to it. Smell. Way more robust. We'll say that. I mean, double so? dry hop. Probably is contributing to that. I'd like the nose better on the 60 minute. Do you? Yeah, I do. I mean, here's the thing. Like, admittedly, I'm a sucker for a hazy IPA nose. I really am. I think they have the most beautiful noses. The problem is a lot of times the flavor just doesn't back that up. It ends up being way further of a fall from where you start to where you end up between the aroma and the flavor. Right. Whereas something like the old school style of a 60 minute, what you're smelling is what you're tasting. Right. And and we did. Yeah. So the expectation is exact pretty much with this beer. It's high expectation. And then you go in and you're like, Oh, that's not what I was wanting. Although I feel like for a hazy IPA, I feel like the nose isn't as robust as a lot of them. Sure. I still think it's pretty robust, though. <sighs> it smells like orange juice. It does have an orange juice to it, but it but it's got like this kind of like sh- sweetness, this kind of sugary sweetness on the nose yeah. too. That's not that. like a normal orange juice sugary yeah. sweetness. You also do get a li- I get a slight dank note in there coming through. That's smelling nice, and there's a little bit of a twist of pine in there. Pineapple, though. Mm-hmm. Getting some pineapple, yeah, some mango. Pine. Pineapple, mango, orange. 
It just smells know. really good. For me, it's just a more muted nose than the 60 Minute. I don't know really? why. Yeah. Well, I think for me, there there are a lot more aromas. And I think it's dialed up more, in my opinion. Do you mean that you like just like the aromas of the? No, 60 I feel minute like more? it's. I feel like the aroma was more robust on the sixty minute. Oh, okay. For me, I don't know. I mean, for me, this one, this one, like, penetrates my nasal cavity more, just because I feel like it's kind of like a burst of of smell. And we did pick this one because we've had it before and liked it. <laughs> Yes. So we know we like this. Well, actually, I mainly picked this one because we did have some other IPA hoppy beers by them that we haven't tried yet, and I was going to go with one of those, but all of them were Imperial IPAs, and I'm like, no, it's got to be single. It's got to yeah. be regular IPA. So this was the only one who fit that category, but we have had it and liked it before. So what are you tasting in it? Definitely the pine and pineapple. It is like a juicy orange, and there is a little mm-hmm. bitterness to it. There is a little bitterness to it, yeah. It's not, obviously, as much as the 60-minute, um, but it's yeasty. You know, it it's got that yeasty. kind of, like, yeasty, somewhat flowery finish to it that um, I just don't really like that in beers. Yeah. Now, as far as hazy IPAs go, like, this is good. As far as a hazy IPA goes, I can drink this. Like, it is good. I do like it. But for me personally, when you put it next to a 60-minute IPA, I would rather drink the 60-minute. Yeah, I agree. To be honest. It's – the flavors are more bold. The – and they're on – they're more bold. They're more harmonious in my opinion. The fact that there is more bitterness to it I feel like backs the flavors up better. There's more of a mouthfeel to it. I don't like that, like, yeasty, flowery finish to hazy IPAs. There's none of that with 60 right. Minute. It finishes more robust and clean for that reason. So, it just feels like a muddy... Hazy IPAs, it feels like a muddy finish. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I can see that. If that makes any sense. So, we both prefer the 60 Minute. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. At this day and time? Yeah. Definitely. But, with the caveat of saying that for a hazy IPA, the Cheater Hops 18 is good. And it's called 18, by the way, because, yes, they've been doing different versions of Cheater Hops. I think our favorite was, what, 14? Was it 14? I don't remember. I think. If memory serves, 14 was our favorite. It was good. But they do a good job. So, all right. Well, that's our opinion on it. Unfortunately, hazy IPAs are not going away. But, fortunately, 60 Minute is still available. And beers like 60 Minute. But way less than there used to be. Yeah. Alright, so now for the sours. Now you may be thinking, where are they going to choose to start for the old school sour? Why don't we start with what kind of made sours popular? Going back to the whole thing like, we were saying if we could have gotten Heady Topper, that would have been nice as far as where Hazy started. With this one, we're going where Sours did start, just like with the 60-minute where Continuous Hopping started. Uh, and this is where the popularity of Sours really started, and that's with Russian River Brewing out of California. Specifically, where are they out of California? Let me find this. Do, 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 do. I don't... Oh, Santa Rosa. California. And this is their Consecration, which is an ale aged in Cabernet Sauvignon barrels with currants, or currants, however you want to say it, added. Uh, And it's aged four to eight months. It is 10% alcohol. 10%? Yeah. I I forgot that it's that high. Wow. But this is about six and a half years in the bottle. This is an old bottle that we've been holding on to. It's our last Russian River bottle that we've been holding on to. So I figured... Crack it open. Well, this is the time to do it, especially because, like, this is what popularized sour beers. Russian River did that. So this is the best place to start. I mean, I remember when it was, like, Russian River, Russian... And it still is. People love Russian River. Yeah. They're still super popular. Yeah, I mean, people's... People's interest in Russian River hasn't gone away at all. I mean, it has died down some, 
because of the availability of sours now and the fact that they've become more popular. Now, I will say, when we started this podcast, pretty much nobody out this way in our state liked sour beers, including us. Yeah. We, were, we weren't really into sour beers. I remember the first sour beer I ever tried was, coincidentally, Dogfish Head's Festina Pesh back in, like, 2007 or so. And I just remember being like, oh, dude, I don't, I don't dig on that. But through doing the podcast, we got into sour beers and then once we got into sour beers, we were having a hard time finding any in Maryland because it wasn't a thing. People weren't really into it. But now there are a crap ton of sour beers in the – actually, there's there's a lot on the shelves at this point. It's still not my preferred style. Sure. But. I really enjoy it, though. Okay, so what is it looking like, this consecration? It's, like, it's brown, brown, amber, red. Oh, and it was cork and caged, if people couldn't tell. And I think a 500 milliliter bottle, I think it is. No, I think it's 375. Okay, so yeah, it's like brownish reddish with a little orange around the edges, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, much. Yeah, it's, it's a 375. Not much of any head. No. It's, even when you swirl it up and like get it agitated, there's really not much of any head. Huh. What does it smell like? Whoa. That kind of smells a little, um, I'm trying to think of the name. It's like nail polish remover has Mm -hmm. the smell of that. Acetone? Acetone, yeah. It's strong. Ooh. The booze. I I think what's happened here is the time that's spent in the bottle. That booze has really started to come forward. it's very boozy, very barrel forward. Very boozy. A lot of oak. What is it aged in? Yeah. It, it, it's aging in um, Cabernet Sauvignon barrels. Okay. I'm I do it's smell very that. oaky. Well, I smell a tannic note to yes, it. Yes, I do too. Which would be coming from the residual Cabernet from the barrels, but also from the wood. So I like that. That's kind of softening it a bit. But yeah, I smell a lot of wood. Yeah. You are right about that. And that bit of acetone, I smell some apple, like a slight apple to it. Not something like an acetyl aldehyde issue, but just like natural apple smell. I don't like the nose. The nose is not great. There's a, oh, there's a little honey and a little kind of like a cherry type note. I'm assur- I'm assuming that's the currants. Yeah. But it doesn't for me. It doesn't smell bad, especially once you get past that strong alcohol smell. It'll be interesting to see what the flavors like at this point. Let's go. This isn't a beer I probably would have liked when it was fresh either. It is better fresh, I will say that, from what I remember. That said... Very grapey. There's a lot of grape on it. Yeah. That said, for six and a half years in the bottle, it's not bad at all. I think it's bad. I don't like it. The alcohol, like in the nose, the alcohol is more perceptible. It tastes like boozy grape juice. Boozy grape juice with oak. I get a lot of oak. I get so a like, lot, a lot of woodiness it's to so it. It's so woody. There is that, like that slight acetone in the actual flavor. Uh, I do taste the currants. I do. Uh, and, but the currants are starting to kind of blend together a bit with the um, with the Cabernet Sauvignon. I am getting the apple you were mentioning. Mm-hmm. There's definitely a fruit. Yeah. Hmm. It's not for me. Yeah, I know it's not for me. Yeah, it's definitely not for you. Here. You gotta finish mine. I will finish yours. Getting hammered tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it's definitely definitely drink your uh, Russian rivers. Um, fresh people, if you're going to get them, I remember this being a lot better. But like I said, for being in the bottle for six and a half years, and how much the booze has kind of made itself known, I think it's still tasting pretty solid. I'm good with it. But yes, it, it, you, you're perceiving a lot less. You already of, rinsed me. Oh, sorry. Well, couldn't stop it. Oh my gosh. Can't I stop it. drink more water? Okay, so that not being the best representation of what it is, but we did it. Uh, let's move to the new version. And like we said, we're going with stuff that, you know, good breweries. So what's one of the breweries that we've said is 
One of our favorite, if not our favorite, for sour beers now. Dewey. Dewey Beer Company out of Dewey, Delaware. Dewey, Dewey, Dewey Beach. Yeah. Oh, this one was, is, was brewed in there. Haberson. Oh, okay. Harberson. Harbison. Harbison, Delaware. Yeah, yeah they have two locations. So. Um, so this is their secret machine, pineapple, grapefruit, and orange, and it's 7%. As people call these pog, they call them pog sours, 16-ounce um, can. What did you say the percentage was? Seven. Okay. All right. Well, it's going to be 3% less than this consecration, so. Yeah. There you are. Thank you. I'm pretty sure you'll like this a lot more than the last I one. I hope so. I, I know so. I'm sure you will. Okay. So, what's it looking like? It's like a hazy IPA. <laughs> Mm, yeah, it does. Like, it look it looks like a just like a little less hazy and more orange version of the Cheater Hops eighteen. Yeah, it's like yellow orangish hazy. There's a lot of head. A lot too. of head. A lot of head hanging out on that smell. Oh my gosh, that lots is lots of pineapple, lots of orange. That is so vibrant. I don't know if I'm picking out the grapefruit. Are you getting the grapefruit? Um. Mainly pineapple and orange for me. Yeah, I, the pineapple and orange are so strong. That grapefruit does get lost between those other two. Um, I, yeah, I can't really pick that out. I can't really pick it out. But the the pineapple and the orange, very strong. I mean, it smells like juice, basically. But yeah. there is a bit of a beer smell to it. And here's the thing. It's not like, like it's hazy, but it's not sludgy. Right. That's the thing. I know I've talked about this recently, but what pisses me off with some sours nowadays, especially like smoothie sours sometimes, is that there's so much puree still in the beer that you're just like chewing the beer at the end. And that's, I don't like that. Yeah. But this, you're getting the effect of a highly pureed beer smell-wise, and I'm assuming taste-wise, but you don't have to deal with that sludgy grossness. Taste. Rebecca did it. Tastes good. It has a little bit of a naked Cheerio finish. Again, a lot of pineapple, a lot of orange. It's like the perfect marriage of, like, sweet and a little tart. Yeah. That's nice. Mm. Yep. A lot of pineapple, a lot of orange. I get the grapefruit and the flavor. Okay. I do. But I, I will say that, to me, the grapefruit's coming off more as, like, a grapefruit peel. As opposed to, like, the actual flesh of the grapefruit. But it is good. Oh, yeah, and I am now getting, after, like, my third sip, I am getting that Naked Cheerio flavor, mm -hmm. like, at the very end. Also tastes a little... It's not cr crazy. It tastes creamy to me. Yeah. I could definitely see that. And it's very easy drinking. It's very easy drinking. Like, I would put this at, like, a 4%, mm -hmm. maybe 5%, maybe 5%. Between four and five percent, um, it doesn't taste like seven. That's no, kind. It's very I mean, dangerous. Not like seven is super high ABV, but it is dangerous because if you have enough of a beer that tastes like four to five percent, but it's seven yeah. percent, that's going to sneak up on you fast. Yeah, this is really good. It's just like real juicy, real fruity. Yeah, there's a nice tropicality to it. Well, and let me say that one of the big differences between a sour that's being done like this now versus a sour like the Consecration and how sours used to be, uh, and some are, still are done this way, the Consecration's way more sour. Right. This one, it's kind of more of like a very low sour or maybe just considered tart, to be honest. Yeah, and that's what a lot of the smoothie sours are just kind of very fruit yeah. forward, not as sour... Not a, you know, they don't make you pucker as much. Yeah. There is still a place in my heart for beers like Russian Rivers Consecration and other beers like that. But I kind of feel like I'm more enjoying the new wave sour. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's my jam. I really do enjoy that, especially because it's not, you don't feel like you're going to struggle when you're taking on a can of it or a bottle of yeah. it by yourself or even sharing it. Like, you don't feel like you're going to struggle. I remember having days years ago trying to drink sours by the brewery by myself and just having to tap out. 
because I it, the sourness got just too, too much. much. I, I had just, palate fatigue. It felt like just my, burned your taste buds. Yeah, it felt like my taste buds were raw at a certain point. Like you can only take so much sour on your taste buds, and that's one of the main reasons I really like this new movement with sours. Is it's really toning that down and it's making it a lot more easy and sessionable. And also, it's a good. There are good gateway styles for people too. They're excellent gateway style. Yeah, definitely. Especially for people who typically like they don't. They're not into beer, but they want to think about getting into beer, and they're into like fruity mixed drinks. Mm-hmm. Like it's an easy step to go to a beer like this, and then start to get people more into actual beer. Absolutely. Not that that's yeah. Not One of the beer. other old styles that we were thinking we couldn't find. I heard they were distributing, but maybe not. Was Allagash's Cool Ship line? Yes, yeah, we we did look for that. We did consider that one as well. Yeah. But then it dawned on me while we were there. I have an old Russian River. When are we going to have it on the podcast anyway? It, it's always better to just use what we have because we have too much beer anyway. So that's why we did it. But hopefully, this was fun for people. What about you? Yeah, it was a, it's interesting. It's kind of like a little history lesson. Yeah, kind of. And uh, hopefully everyone liked that. Like I said, you can give us feedback on this. Do you want more of this type of thing? Brutalbattlepodcast at gmail.com. Um, so, yeah, in summation for me, I like the old school IPA. I like the new school sour. Yeah. What about you? I Same. agree with that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it, it's, a, it's a representation of sometimes the older stuff is better. Sometimes the newer stuff is better. Yeah. Are we ranking these? Oh, yeah, we should. Or I not. Totally, I totally wasn't thinking about oh, okay. that. But, yeah, we should. Let's do it. We always do that. Why am I... I'm off my game, I guess. Okay. Uh-huh. I figured you were putting that there. Is that it? Yeah. That's mine, too. Go oh, ahead. really? Yeah, go ahead. We've been matching a lot more recently. I I guess if you drink beer with someone long enough, your taste buds start to become Is that what similar. happens? Uh, maybe. That's my assumption. Okay. So, number four is the Consecration by Russian River, the age... The ale aged in Cabernet Sauvignon barrels with currants added. Still good, though. In my opinion. I don't like it. I got it. Um, number three is the Cheater Hops 18 by Sapwood Cellars. That is the IPA double dry hop with Vic Secret, Hydra, and Galaxy. Number two is Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA. That's 60 Minute. I'm retrying it. It's so good. It's, it is good. It's really good. And then number one is The Secret Machine by Dewey Beer Company, which is their pineapple grapefruit orange. And their Secret Machine line, they have lots of different variations of different fruits. This just yeah. happens to be this. The fruit that we have is the pineapple grapefruit orange. And I just want to reiterate how wonderfully of a job Dewey does with their sours. Like... That same recipe or that same concept of beer in the hands of another brewery, disaster. They have honed their skills in, and they have really gotten this down to a science. Their sours are so good. Just so good. they are good. Yeah. So, like I said, hopefully people like this. Um, Let's talk about our social media. The only one we care about. Well, the only one we're really active on is Instagram, which is <laughs> exactly. Brutal Battle Podcast. Yes, so check that out. Do us a favor, rate us and review us on whatever podcatcher you're using. iTunes helps the most, though. Also, do word of mouth if you can. And if you want to go back and listen to some bad episodes, if you want to go all the way back to number one or earlier ones in general, just go to BrutalBattle.com or you can go to Archive.org and search Brutal Battle because that's where we have our files hosted um, what else? Oh, we're on Untapped, of course. Rebecca C. Uh, Rebecca C. Carlin C. or Carlin Cook. You can check it out that way. We're usually checking into the same stuff, yeah. but especially nowadays yeah. with the pandemic, we don't go out. Right? Yeah, just drinking at home for the most part. But yeah, and then if you want to say anything, say hi, give us ideas. Brutal Battle Podcast at Gmail dot com to email. But I appreciate everyone's support. Um, yeah, this was fun. Yeah. So everyone. Until next time. Keep it brutal. I feel so-